interesting. Hey everyone, we're gonna get started in a few minutes. Thanks for coming. Yeah, they usually do it on May Day. Executive Director of Lane Arts Council, and welcome to May's first Friday Art Walk. It's so good to see so many familiar faces, and this is really fun for me to be on this puff cycle talking to you. It's just very unique, very unique art walk. Lane Arts Council, we've been around for over 40 years. We support the arts throughout Lane County, arts and schools. We support artists with business workshops, and we run First Friday Art Walk, Rain or Shine. Yeah, we're yes. We've been here in the snow and the ice, and we're so lucky now. It's this beautiful weather. You know, this summer, we're going to have some incredible art walks, and we're really excited that we're kicking it off here in Kesey Square. And, you know, Kesey um, is such a cultural icon in our community and around the world, and this this square here honors Kesey. So, you know, we're, we're so glad to be kicking off the art walk because arts and culture can really happen everywhere, right? There's, it can happen in galleries, it happens in schools, and it happens in public spaces, in open spaces like this. It's really part of like life and the air we breathe. So I love that we can just be in an open space and be around all sorts of different types of art. We'll be talking about art in the pub cycle and other pieces around the space. And so you'll really, be, you'll, I really invite you to check out our art walks this summer. We're going to be doing poetry, um, excuse me, dance in June. We'll be having a soul band in July. August is Visual Arts Week. September, we're going to turn this plaza into a Latin American plaza with salsa dance party going on. So we're really going to energize um, this space in particular. So we um, invite you to keep with us throughout the summer art walks. So this art walk, um, we're really grateful for our community partners and sponsors. We want to thank KLCC. They've been our year-round media sponsor. So please help me thank KLCC for supporting the art walk. I feel like, I, like I'm supposed to give you guys a drink or something. What, what was yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. 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 We should have done that with Beer Garden next time. Um, and of course, every month we have a different Art Walk sponsor. And this month, the Eugene Symphony Association is sponsoring the Art Walk. So please help me thank the Eugene Symphony. You may know they have an incredible um, fest that's called SimFest each year. It's on June 1st. So Mariana is walking around. She's back there. And she is going to um, enter you into a raffle to win free tickets. So please see Mariana. And so in conjunction with this, with having the symphony sponsor, we invited them to also be your host for the evening. So as you know with Art Walk, you can go into many of the galleries and venues um, throughout downtown Eugene. If you need an Art Walk guide, we have some folks walking around. There are also some at this table. So you can choose your own adventure or you can also follow the tour guides. Um, and they will be interviewing the artist, so you get an inside scoop of the artwork and the artist's intention and why they created the work. So it's a really great way to know more about our local artists and the artwork that they created. So I'm really excited about our hosts um, today. We have Francesco Lecic Chong, who a lot of you know is music director and conductor of the Eugene Symphony. I know you have a lot of fans here, Francesco. <laughs> to our community and it's a very community oriented person as you can tell and I love the energy that he brings not only to his work but to the rest of the community and you may not know we actually have a surprise co-host Haley Loren is here with us I know a lot of you know her singer songwriter she tours around the world performing also a very community person she does a lot of benefits she's done benefits for Lane Arts Council and she will be actually headlining SimFest in June so um, you are in good hands tonight. You're going to have a blast. So please help me welcome Francesco and Haley. Thanks. 
Hi everyone, um, Amy and I are so excited. Uh, we've had a great time this week. We've been going through all of our charts and getting them ready for SimFest. Um, it's really going to be just a most incredible event that celebrates um, all of the amazing um, uh, musicians and groups that are in this city. Um, we'll have Ballet Fantastique will be part of this program. We'll have um, uh, Tony Glauzy is coming back, incredible yeah. trumpet player from around here. And we'll have uh, the youth orchestra is going to be a part of this concert. Basically, as many people as I can round up are going to be a part of this concert. Yeah. Um, and we're so excited to bring it, you know, along with food and drink from around here and just have a big old celebration of all the things that make Eugene incredible. So we're really excited to be here starting off in Kesey Square and uh, May is Bike Month. So our first uh, our first guest is Shane McRoads. Shane, there he is. Come on, oh, come on over here. And we're going to have uh, Shane tell us a little bit about what Bike Month is all about. Thanks. Thanks everyone for coming out to the kickoff to May is Bike Month, which also happens to be the first Friday Art Walk. Uh, we're really excited to uh, partner and bring out uh, some wonderful bike-oriented art and add that to the Eugene culture of uh, art and bikes and everything that is beautiful in our community. Uh, beyond, besides this pub cycle, you'll notice our Peace Health Rides Bike Share Bikes and some special art wraps that have been done for those, as well as the artists who will come up here in a little bit to talk about the art that they've created um, for this month. And uh, this is just a kickoff all through May. There are over 30 rides and events happening all through the month and into June. And I encourage you to grab one of those Peace Health Rides bikes uh, and ride it for free. Uh, go on to Peace Health Rides and uh, sign up for a month membership for free. You can ride for an hour every day. Um, there are some organized rides that you could join, including uh, some that are connected to art and mural tours, uh, but also some that are oriented for new riders and returning riders, and some longer rides for everyone. So I um, encourage you to get out and uh, join a ride or an event, and if you're inspired, do one of your own. Go to webikelane.org and create your own fun-themed ride and host it and have other people come out and join you for the fun. Because <laughs> bikes don't make bike. that kind of noise. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, I'll pass it on and I think we'll hear from our artists now. Thanks and uh, get out and ride. Thanks so much Shane. Sounds fantastic. Well, we have um, four wonderful artists at this stop here and we're going to hear from each one of them. First up is uh, Wade Love. Maybe you just want to tell us how your, uh, your where your work is and how it's connected uh, to Bike Month. Yeah. Just make sure that people know where to find you. Yeah, right. Um, hi, thank you so much for coming out today. Um, I want to first thank Cindy for picking me um, to do this mural on this bike. Um, and I want to thank the cultural services, of course, um, it, which would, none of this would be possible. Um, it was a great honor and to be a part of this, and I'm super excited. And um, yeah, it, it, I was super excited. Now I'm just like super excited to see it going around town and um, people having fun on it. I hope um, I hope I could add a little bit of color and hopefully it'll pop a little bit more, be safer, um, and just be more vibrant and fun. Um, that's what my uh, purpose was. Um, and uh, yeah, you have I uh, I've done. I've started just doing mural work more like maybe just in the last couple years um, and I've done a few you know big projects at um, Public House in Springfield and um, I did uh, Cornbread Cafe's bathrooms and like I'm doing uh, Peterson Barn Community Center stairways if you ever get a chance to go check it out I'm almost finished um, and I've done you know quite a few things lately and I'm just really enjoying um, making art so I hope I can create even bigger and more art for uh, the entire city um, to enjoy more. I hope. And uh, yes, I don't know. Um, yeah, my name is Wade Love. Um, you can find me on Instagram or like Facebook and that kind of jam. Um, I have some uh, business cards up on the front of the thing. I also do interior decorating and painting. And um, I'm just a general. Uh, I just like to make things beautiful. And I'm so stoked to be able to have this as a medium. It's very unique and very different. It was definitely a huge learning experience. And uh, I uh, hope to get to wrap something else. It's uh, if we, we decided not to paint it because it would just get beat up and worn out and 
water spilled all over or whatever, you know. So um, I think this was a good idea to, 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 to make it the wrap. Um, it goes through quite a process and it definitely was a learning experience, but I think it came out really um, fun and beautiful. And uh, anyway, yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks so much, Mike. There'll be time after each one of these stops, so make sure you can find all of our artists if you have any questions or want to talk to them further. Um, next up, we'll hear from Judd Turner. Woohoo! Oh, Judd! Oh, and, uh, and Renee Mani. Hi. Thanks for coming out to First Friday Air Walk. Beautiful evening in Eugene to do this together. Uh, I'm Judd Turner, this is my partner Renee Mani, and we are fabricators at a studio called the Oblivion Factory in West Eugene. Uh, thanks to Lean Arts Council for inviting us to do some bicycle themed art. We work with found objects and welded steel. So I did uh, the great blue heron that's over sort of that direction. His name is Atticus, and he is preying upon a small frog named Ramon. <laughs> Ramon is on a little lily pad made of bike gears and other parts. Um, Again, mostly found object bicycle pieces. And then my partner Renee Mani did a porcupine named Snuggla. She she's built on top of an air compressor. Then there is um, bicycle chain fenders, spokes, cables, fenders. Thank you, Hutch's Bicycle Shop and Bicycle Way of Life for generous donations to make her happen. She's also expressing her bicycle safety with her reflectors on her rear and sides. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. We really enjoy being able to work and live in this community and create art together and present it for y'all. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Wonderful. And last but not least, uh, Matt Bernie. There he is. All right, come on up, Matt. Hi everybody, thanks for coming out to the Art Walk. Uh, this is really awesome to be standing up here and showing some art. I love going around and seeing everybody else's usually. So uh, my art is the uh, bench and the bike jumping the jerry cans over there. So one is kind of inspiration for you to kick the can uh, this month and ride your bike more. The weather is perfect, so get out there and ride. And um, the bench is a product of our snowstorm we had this winter, where I was snowed into my shop for about four days and been working on that bench. Um, anyways, I uh, mostly do general metal fabrication, but also create some uh, kind of more on the functional side of things, uh, um, form following function art. And I really like that crusty uh, industrial chunky stuff. So, from rust to rust, uh, in rust we trust. Um, so I'm looking, always looking for old, uh, old log yards and farms and their scrap piles and bone yards and trying to find the, the really, the really crusty stuff that's been in the ground for maybe 50 years and has a lot of texture to it. And then of course it's terrible to weld on. So that's always a fun project. Anyways, um, thanks everybody for coming out and check out the bench and have a good time on the art walk. Okay, uh, apparently we got so many takes, we're actually going to do a drawing now for our Synthes concert. <laughs> Haley, you want to do the honors? I can. <laughs> All right, we'll find out the lucky people. Here we go, here we go. What do you got? Carrie and Gracia. Carrie? Oh, okay, alright, we're gonna find. Are we just doing one? Yeah, just one. Oh! Okay. Okay! So we're gonna keep on moving here. How much time do we have? We've got five minutes. Okay, so we're gonna have five minutes here. So go around, make sure you see all this amazing art that we're off to stop number two. Uh, so Haley and I will see you there. Thanks, everyone.
anybody could build it. Yeah, but it, it's still going to be... So follow us. I said now we can see this up close.
Here we are. Welcome to Oregon Art Supply, everyone. For those of you who are maybe just joining us, uh, my name is Francesca Leche Chong. I'm music director of the Eugene Symphony, and we're very excited because the Eugene Symphony is a sponsor of tonight's Art Walk. Yeah. I'm also here with my co-host, Haley Loren. She and I are performing together with the Eugene Symphony on June 1st. It's a program called Synthfest. Food, wine, dancing, tons of incredible music, everything from classical to jazz to rock and roll. You're going to want to totally come and check it out. Um, and we're really excited to be hosting uh, tonight's uh, Art Walk together. So here at, uh, uh, oh, and also a special thank you to our media sponsor, KLCC. Let's give them a hand as well. All right. So, um, oh, and getting all the things I'm supposed to do. So, and the last thing, of course, is not only are we performing together on June 1st, but we're going to be doing a, a drawing for tickets for SimFest on June 1st. So, Mariana, uh, there she is. So, you give her uh, the informa uh, information so she can enter, enter you into our drawing. We'll be doing a drawing right after this stop, right, for some tickets to SimFest. So, be sure to go and see her. Um, and now it's a great pleasure to introduce Sarah Grew, our artist on this stop. And um, I think, Sarah, maybe I'll just turn it over to you first of all and tell us a little bit about um, um, th this exhibit here and, and the work you've done and the, the mediums that you've been working with. All right, well, I'm really interested in time and in how we visually represent time. And so I, one of the thoughts I had was to look through our history and to look at how other artists had represented time. And through that process and through thinking and reading a lot of information about time and how our brains process the things and time and visual uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines and all these things, I came up with sort of six different kinds of time that I could, um, and ways of, of representing these abstract concepts. And they're all really sort of different kinds of temporalities is what is in my mind. So my six kinds of time are light, and the paintings on steel are really about light, and they're paintings where I'm trying to use uh, light as a, as a kind of paint and to change the way that paintings are in that they're no longer static. They're always changing every single second actually. Every time you blink your eyes the light has changed just a little bit and the paintings will have changed just a little bit and granted it can be very subtle but um, if at different points in the day you can see really big changes or if you walk in front of the paintings and so I'm really trying to use light as a form of color and as a form of of paint um, and so that's really that's one of my big kinds of time a second kind of time that I use um, is counting and repetition and the for me one of the that came out I started thinking about um, well I should preface this stillness is a kind of is a is a philosophical kind of time this idea of stillness and timelessness and so that's often represented by the horizon and the horizontal line and so I was working with this idea of the horizon line and stillness and I started thinking about what other kinds of things do we do with with horizontal lines and I thought of a timeline and um, so then I started thinking when I was looking at ideas of repetition and counting moments and counting the seconds passing, I started realizing, oh, we put an EKG on a timeline that's based on a horizontal line. And so, and that's a way of counting moments and counting time. And of course, what's interesting about that is that um, stillness is 
represented by a flat line, but obviously none of us want to have a flat line if we're having an EKG done. And so I love the idea that life is this constant interruption of stillness, um, because I think that's, you know, so perfect for what our lives really are. Um, so the EKG drawings are, are using the idea of a heartbeat um, and this repetitious heartbeat. And I actually draw them going back and forth and back and forth. And actually that one, um, I was at a residency and um, I and the, there was a composer there and I had just done, I was doing this series and he said, oh, I want to write some music to this. And so we're trying to work out a way to make it into a musical score. Maybe I should turn that over to you. <laughs> um, you can, and... Uh, so, and I, which I think is also a really interesting thing to think about in terms of time and, and repetition. Um, so we have light and counting and stillness, and um, we also have, um, can I remember them all off the top of my head? Um, we, we have what I call, this is the most recent one that you find is this degradation of materials, and sometimes I purposely use materials that are gonna change over time. None of the works, in this room have those today, but I have actually done work where the work is going to change through time because the, um, I've used alternative process photographs that will fade on purpose. And so as time passes, the photographic image that's at the base of the painting will actually kind of change and start to do other things. And so, so ideas like that, those are all things that are really interesting to me. Um, so that's kind of what my work is about. Um, and one of the reasons I'm showing both drawings and paintings here is that I decided that it was a little too much to have all of my kinds of time all in one piece. I have done that, but I wanted to, I felt like I needed to expand away from that, and so I've um, been doing these works, you know, trying to separate different kinds of temporalities into into different works. Yeah. I am so intrigued by um, the this, this steel work here, and if, if I understood you correctly, it's almost because the way light bounces off of it that it looks different from, and is that how you want them to be viewed, sort of, that you have this chance to move, move around them? Oh yes, absolutely. I, I think it's really important to um, to move and, and to interact with them. And I was I told someone else who was here that I had actually have had wrote up once a proposal to do an installation where I was going to um, have all sorts of materials that would interact with the paintings, like lights of different colors and fabric of different colors, so that you as the viewer had the ability to change the painting really instantaneously to, and and yet only momentarily. Um, and I thought that would be really fun. I, I'll do it someday. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> was, was there a particular um, moment that you got inspired to think of? I mean, obviously, none of us would really think of steel as the first thing to do a painting on. Was there? What gave you that inspiration? Hmm, that's a good question about. Well, I think it was really just the reflective surface and wanting to use light as a, a form of paint. I mean, light is a really interesting thing because it's both a particle and a wave, and so it's kind of this conundrum because it's a physical thing, but it's also a wave that isn't a physical thing, and I really love that di duality, and, um, and so trying to find a material that would allow that duality to play um, was one of, one of the inspirations for the metal. Well, thank you so much. I think, you know, maybe since we all want to take some time to walk by and see this, um, we'll, we'll uh, take some time to walk through here. Be sure to talk to Sarah if you have any other questions as well. And how much time do we move on? About 10 minutes. About, so 10 minutes before we move on to the next stop. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah.
never seen him, you need to point him out. You can go kick him. Joining us. What a really fun and unique art walk. Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. This is really fun. I guess it's because I'm on the left. I don't know. I love this. It's so fun. So here we are, stop number four. And I really want to thank our sponsors again, Banner Bank and City of Eugene Cultural Services Division. Thank you for sponsoring and, and coordinating this art walk with us. We're having a blast. And at this stop, we are going to talk about the 20 by 21 Huge Mural Project, and we'll we'll talk about a couple of the pieces that are in this location. So, Isaac, would you like to talk about the project? Sure thing. 20 by 21 is an initiative to bring 20 of the best possible artists, internationally and local artists, to Eugene, adorn our city with a collection of the finest art before the IAAF World Track and Field Championships. So the context is the world, the purpose is community, it's our version of building community with the world. It's also a way to show how art can transform the way your city looks and feels. Behind you is a piece that is very recent by Matt Small. I have Justin Bauer with me here. I encourage you, as, as we talk about this piece, to kind of move around so you can see Matt Small's piece. You can see it up close and you can see it from down the lane. Maybe someone can move that flag there real quick. So we'll go ahead and set it up. Matt Small is an artist from the United Kingdom. He uses found objects to create portraits. He is a gallery artist, meaning that he normally works in pieces that are a quarter of this size or smaller. Um, when he came to Eugene, we invited him to do a mural, a full-scale piece, and he accepted. And to my right, I have a, a, a man who made this happen. So uh, this is Justin. Justin works with the 20 by 21 team to uh, help keep this initiative going. And for this piece, Justin did so much work. He built the frame, he consulted with architects, he consulted with engineers, he consulted with a, a resident artist to help build all of the framework behind it. And he set up a studio in the parking garage over here for Matt Small to work. He basically shepherded this piece all the way through. Justin, I've been watching you for the past couple of weeks and I just, I gotta say, I think your soul on fire. That's accurate. Right. Could you share with us what it was like to uh, help Matt Small deliver this artwork? It was an amazing experience. Um, Isaac asked me to be the production, uh, production manager, which loosely just immediately meant making the framework to build it on. But once Matt arrived, um, it became pretty obvious that it was going to take more than one person to create the piece that was four times bigger than the piece that he had ever created. And so it quickly turned into a collaboration. Uh, we sourced about 95% of the material from brain recycling. Uh, filled up a huge trailer and a truckload. Brought it back to the studio over here. Uh, started dismantling everything that we brought. And that's where you see the palette that Matt created. <laughs> Isaac's giving me instructions on microphones. Um, and we started creating, and as we were creating things, it just happened that the historic uh, Hayward Field was uh, coming to its end. And fortunately, I've got friends in low or high places, and I made a few phone calls, and we were able to get in and, and salvage some of the material from the grandstands, and they were worked into the piece. So not only do you have this historic Olympian that means a lot to the world, and especially what's going on in the world right now, but now we have pieces from the grandstand that will be around forever and living on in this piece. If you look over, you'll see like the diamonds, those red diamonds, that's part of the track. The green uh, square with the diamond inside of it, those are handrails from the grandstand. There's some of the roof, uh, there's some of the stairs, as well as many other uh, iconic kind of organ pieces. There's a Coleman stove worked into the, if you look closely, you'll see the uh, lighting instructions for it. What else do you want to know? 
So since the project is intended to be a, um, an on-ramp to the World Track and Field Championships, um, Matt Small conceived of a portrait of Jesse Owens. And a portrait of Jesse Owens has many, many messages that we welcome in this community. One of them being that we welcome all people of all races and abilities to be with us in community. okay out there yes yes okay good um, we're gonna take a second to talk about the 20 by 21 mural project and then we're gonna move on to uh, chat with Ico here um, this year has been an interesting year for the project uh, we try to get all the artists here in one space at one time but coordinating an international mural festival really is quite complicated I like to think of it this way we're taking artists from other countries to commission them to do work on other people's walls with other people's money. It's a very tricky triangle and a lot can go wrong and a lot can go very right as well. So two artists that weren't able to make it here this year because they hit visa issues is Shamsia. Shamsia is Afghanistan's first female street artist and we are committed to Shamsia. So we're, Paul here is our artist liaison. He's working in partnership with the Sacramento Mural Festival to uh, continue advocating for her visa so that we can get up here possibly in late August. 
The other artist is from our sister city, uh, Kathmandu, Nepal, one of our sister cities. His name is H11235, and he also hit visa issues, and we are also committed to him. So later this summer, keep a lookout. We might be able to bring these two artists into Eugene to, to give us some murals. Um, one of the things that has really kind of blown us away about this project is the nature and the spirit of generosity that is Eugene, Oregon, and that's the people that make it up. Most artists that come here after visiting here with us, they make a real connection and they stay connected with us when they go back to their home countries. There are stories of, of artists inviting our project managers to help them with, with murals in other cities. Um, when Wa Tunin was painting a mural off of uh, Lawrence, uh, on his last night, a woman from his province in China came up to him and said, what's your favorite home-cooked meal? And she went home and cooked that meal for him and brought it back that night. Yeah. The mural we just saw uh, by Matt Small, upon leaving Matt Small called Eugene, Oregon, his spiritual home. Yeah, and I just, it makes me really proud, actually, that we are such great, great people and we're so such a hospitable community. So thank all of you for that. <laughs> All right, yes, thank you. And it's so incredible that we can put murals on so many different types of canvases, and here we are with the parquet, and we get to have this mural. We get to live with this mural here in Eugene, right on our parquet. So I'd like to introduce Lady Eiko. If you could tell us about your piece. Oh, that, that's a really big question. So what, what, what can you see, you know? Can, can you please come closer? Yeah, come on in, everybody. I, I, Help I, I don't really out. talk like Thank you. you guys, so you have to listen carefully. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, I like to introduce myself. My name is Aiko. And I, I, I live in New York for the last 20 years, since 1997. And I spent my first 20 years in Tokyo, Japan. Then I spent the last 20 years in New York. But also I've been traveling so many different places to do this uh, street art project. Um, there is my friend Martha Cooper. Hey, Martha Cooper. Yeah, she's also traveling from New York, and she is the most important photo documentarist in our. Yeah, but but she's awesome. Like she's been taking a picture of us since 1970 or even 80s. Yeah, some like a uh, original of graffiti era, and she's she's really important. You must say hello. But yeah, she, she told me I have to explain to this world. So yeah, um, I'm a stencil artist. So uh, I spend a lot of time preparing stencil before start working on these walls. Um, usually I spend like a week, 10 days, depends on the wall. And I have assistant this time. He's not here, but his his name is Stefan. Stefan. Stefan and I spent three days working on this wall last Monday, and uh, we completed this wall. I, I'm really happy about this. This is an image of Japanese woman, um, Geisha Maiko. You guys can call. Um, she's a Maiko girl. It's an apprentice. Geisha, she's a dancer. She wants to like dance and perform in different countries. So I've been painting this image um, over and over again, maybe like 10 different cities last year. So this is a, a kind of like my de last destination for this girl. And I'm happy the fact that uh, you guys really like it and dig in it. And in front of um, Academy of Performance Arts, so you know this is really great, you know, location. But also you have to un understand that um, this is not the end of artwork. You have to take one more block over there, then come back, because you're gonna see another Japanese thing. It's really important. Um, you guys cannot miss this. Then you should tell me how you feel. You know. 
<laughs> I'm so glad the fact that I have three big suitcases and I, I've been traveling for free, you know? Yeah, like these guys over there had a, a really crazy traveling and I, I still feel really painful about that. So yeah, I like to talk about this if you guys are willing to. <laughs> yeah. Is, is there any questions for Aiko? Okay, the question is, what is the significance of the dark and the light? Yeah, um, I chose this image, especially sisters. Like, I got so much inspiration um, about this sister image, like twins, uh, yin and yang, day and, day and night, positive, negative, you know, birth and death. Like, it has a lot of meaning. And yeah, I, I actually I went to Mount Sisters like a couple of days ago and, and I found another connection with sisters, so I felt good about that too. The three sisters, you went up to the Cascade yeah. Lakes Highway or Highway 242, I mean, yeah. So, um, Aiko, what is your experience um, here in Eugene and how is it different than other places you've been, or is it? Oh my god, um, I was born and raised in Tokyo and I live in New York so I spend a lot of time in concrete jungle and you guys have so much trees like taller than the building and I was just freaking out, you know, it's a really simple thing but for me you guys have such a lot of treasure and you guys are mentally super rich, you know, because of this nature. Of people who live in like a city side, we have more like anxiety and nerves, and you know, every day goes so fast. Like we don't have a time to just take a break. So I, I I got this huge inspiration from you guys also. So I have to say thank you. You know this exchange of my art and you guys' nature and good mind. Yeah, you guys are beautiful people. That's a fair trade. You're welcome. Yep. Another question here. Yes. Question. Yes. The symbols of the playing cards. Oh yeah, um, I, I made this logo when I was working in Las Vegas, you know. I, I think life is gamble. <laughs> so she's asking about your name, your name in the piece? If you see your name, you see those symbols. The symbols of the card? You see her name Love the heart, the diamond, the logo. The logo of her name. The logo. Name. So I understand it's a logo of her name and the heart. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, that has a name. My name spells A I K O. And then, and then because yeah, and and I put. Vegas, put the heart. Yeah, yeah. And there is another sign uh, in the Japanese letter say Lady Aiko. That's a traditional signature. I follow the same rule from like 16th century. Yeah, it's a Japanese style. So Aiko, when you were painting this, there are two things. First of all, our photographer came out to do a photo shoot and he came back and said that was the scariest lift I've ever been on because it was it went up so high up. Yeah. And, and the second piece is, well, Eugene really turned the heat up when it was time for you to be working in our concrete jungle. How'd that go for you? Oh my god, that was like such a challenge, you know. I, I think that was the most waviest lift I was on. Um, I, I felt like I was flying or, or like being on a boat. <laughs> but you know, like I have to handle like heat or uh, freezing weather, rain and wind. That's like our part of nature and like uh, all of us muralists who paint and walk out the door, we have to handle with this condition. Um, you guys going to have an athlete event in 2021? Yeah, but I feel like we are almost like athletes. It's not about just like painting. You have to carry a lot of stuff and climb up on a, like ladders up and down, up and down with heat, you know, or cold weather. So, you know, 
I, I feel like we are doing this uh, another Olympic game or something, you know? Championship. <laughs> Aiko, we would just like to thank you so much for gifting us this piece for our city. Could you all please thank give her you. a round? Thank you. Amazing contribution to our community. We're so lucky, lucky to have international muralists of this caliber coming to our city. So look out for, for more murals over the year in the next few years. What an incredible project. Thanks to the city. Yeah. Where to next, Leora? Yeah, all right. We're going to head over to our last stop of the Art Walk. So it'll be fun to all walk together, take over the streets. We're going to go to New Zone Art Gallery for the Salon des Refusés. So, yeah, we'll head down Willamette, make a right on 8th, and we'll see you at New Zone at 730. We're going to do an original song called uh, True Authentic Smile. Mm -hmm. 